Hi, Cynthia Allen. I'd like to talk with you about what is the Feldenkrais Method. If you're watching this, in all likelihood you're asking yourself that question because you're getting ready to try a class or a practitioner or thinking about it. Or maybe you've tried one and you're wondering, what did we do? And what is this really? Or perhaps you're a practitioner who's trying to figure out how you can answer that question better for someone else. So let's see if I can help out. We're going to use a Rubik's Cube or a Magic Cube as a way of understanding the brain, your brain, your nervous system, and the Feldenkrais Method. Now you get a Rubik's Cube and boy, you know what to do, right? You're going to start turning the parts and see if you can somehow or another come up with one side that is all blue, so I have a couple more here to change, another side that's all orange, another that's red, another that's green. And in order to be able to say that you solved the puzzle, all the colors need to be able to match. Pretty interesting, Rubik's Cubes. Now when you're done with the Rubik's Cube, you might choose to just continue to do it at a faster and faster rate. That could happen. Uh, but probably at some point you're not going to be that interested in the Rubik's Cube anymore. It's sort of like a board puzzle. You get out a board puzzle, you work on it all day long, or maybe you work over it for a week or so. And then once it's put together, you'll spend a little time looking at it and then you go, hmm, okay. I did that one, and it's not real likely that you're going to take it apart and start it over again right away. Typically, people will go get a new puzzle. Well, this is exactly the way you learned as a baby. As a baby, you came in with this wild amount of sensation and feelings and everything was new, and the nervous system was quite noisy and chaotic. And your system was set up to start to try to solve the puzzle of you. You had to learn to swallow, to suck, to blink, to manage your digestion so you didn't spit up so much, to feel those wild feelings in the belly and what it meant to urinate and to poop, right? And all of these things that you had to do and for a few first few times you didn't know what was going on and you certainly didn't know how to inhibit some parts of yourself and activate others in order to make it better. But yet, you have such a cool built-in organic feedback loop that you got better at it rapidly. And every time you got better at a skill, you were able to go on and, and do a new one. This means you take a skill, you get all the colors put together on one side, and you go, hmm, good. I'm good to go. I'm moving on now. This is extremely important for survival. This desire to solve puzzles is literally what our survival depends on. Without it, we would never have gotten to where we were up, walking around, moving, talking, and mastering other things in our lives. So it's really an important aspect. This ability to label something so we understand it and can then move on to something else. It's at the crux of why we ask, is it like yoga? Is the Feldenkrais Method like yoga? Is it like Tai Chi? Is it like parkour? Like natural movement systems? Is it like physical therapy? It's an inborn need in the nervous system, in the human being, to ask that question and see if you can label it. Now, once you can label it, that means you don't have to deal with it much anymore until it causes you some kind of problems. So it turns out that sometimes that desire and drive to label can get into our ways. That labeling, while it has allowed us to survive, it also causes problems like racial profiling. Or last week you had an argument with your spouse in which you thought you heard your spouse say one thing, and that's something you've argued about in the past, but they really said something else. It's the same thing the same idea of how we are designed to take in information and quickly parse it into what is safe, what kind of action do we need to do, what can we go next. So we want to appreciate that inborn software that we're, we have that allows us to learn and take in new novel information. But in the Feldenkrais Method, we want to capitalize on it. We want to capitalize on it. We understand that if we stretch this Rubik's Cube analogy just a little bit in the Feldenkrais Method, we would say that you are the Rubik's Cube, you're the person who is solving the cube, 
and you are the actual movement or the intervention. So let's jump over to a little different analogy and let's take a look at the analogy of science in which we would say you are the subject in an experiment, you are the scientist observing, analyzing the data, and you are the one doing the intervention, the movement. Whoa, you're all three things. I personally find that to be really cool. You can learn, in fact, to be your own guru. Hmm. So, in the Rubik's Cube, you end the end of the day, still a Rubik's Cube. At the end of the day, I'm still Cynthia, you're still whoever you are, but because we are organic, there is this incredible capacity to actually reshape and remodel ourselves. Huh. What does that really mean? Well, certainly we know that we are important in growing our own muscle and bone according to how we use ourselves. And we have lots of new studies that show that the way we eat, the way we move, actually turns on and off certain genes whether we get more movement or less movement, but also the quality of the movement makes a difference. And movement for the Feldenkrais method is not just this physical raise your arm into the air or do, right, that's jumping jacks or whatever. Yeah, it's not just that. It's the movement of your emotion. You cannot have a feeling without a physical movement and you can't have a physical movement without a feeling. Now, you aren't aware of this because again, your nervous system is taking care of all that for you in the background so that you can go on to solve more important puzzles that may be threatening your life or opening new doors for you. But in the Feldenkrais method, we take advantage of that through really unique, new, novel movement experiments that allow you to connect with awareness, sensation, curiosity, experimentation, to improve the quality of your thinking, your feeling, your action, to let you to reorder your own nervous system, your own way of moving in the world. And it turns out that is something that never has to end. It can go on through your entire life. This way of learning allows you to be a lifelong learner. And to that, there is no end.